I was rejected from on the fifth and final round for a full stack software roll and it stings. Okay. Yeah, rejected after a final round, especially if it's a long series of interviews, um, it can. For context, I am a self-taught software engineer with a total of six years of experience. I was interviewing for a full stack role at a popular online therapy company. How popular? I won't say the name, okay, but it's easy to guess as they've been sponsoring a bunch of YouTube creators. Wait, now I'm curious, what company? I went through a total of five interviews before being told by the recruiter that I am not a fit for this role, which is hitting me hard a couple days later. Yeah, five interviews is a lot. I'm writing this out really just a vent as well as let other applicants know what happens in these interviews. Okay, this is helpful. Here's a breakdown of the interviews. The first interview was a 30 minute call with a recruiter who had reached out to me on LinkedIn. I didn't apply. She came looking for me. She told me she was looking for a full stack developer who leaned towards front end as they were looking for someone with React and React Native experience as well as back end experience with PHP, Laravel, Symfony, and Symfony components. Given this information, I thought I'd be the perfect fit. So I went ahead with the interview process. All right, cool. Stack seems to match. The second interview was a 90 minute test dom quiz which had four to five questions covering php javascript and sql scored 100 percent on php and javascript and test dom what the hell is that is that just like a multiple choice quiz oh okay pre-employment assessment or something like that okay it was a 90 minute test 90 minutes wow that's a lot. 90 minutes. I think that initial screening, if it goes over 60 minutes, that's pretty ridiculous. This better be a really good company. Which I had four to five questions covering PHP, JavaScript, and SQL. Scored 100% on PHP and JavaScript and 88% on SQL. Nothing significant to note, just a straightforward test. I, like, I think that's pretty significant that it's 90 minutes for the initial screening. Uh, I'm guessing that was just an online test that you did. The third interview was a 45 minute conversation with one of their software engineering managers. In my opinion, the conversation went really well as he was really just wanting to understand my past experiences and problem solving skills as a developer. He too was a self-taught software engineer. So there was a lot of synergy between the both of us. Awesome. Which is why you got the fourth interview, right? The fourth interview, man, this song is fire. The fourth interview was the hardest as it was a five hour virtual onsite. Per the requirement document, I was tasked with building a server. Let me actually turn this down just a little bit. Uh, tasked with building a server. Where is it? Uh, oh, survey form with two types of questions, radio, single answer and check boxes, multiple choice. I was required to seed the database with six questions that were a mix of radio slash checkbox questions. I also needed to make it possible to add, edit, and remove and reorder the existing questions. Lastly, I was also tasked with building a page for displaying the form results to investigate user happiness. For context, one of the predefined questions was asking if they are happy. Given I had a four hour, four hours of dev time, the requirements said it was okay to cut corners as long as it wasn't in the database schema set up. Okay, I like the priority that they shared with you. Per personally, I felt four hours wasn't enough dev time for this as I was feeling rushed for most of the interview. At the end of the dev time, I was then tasked with demoing the project and the code itself to the five developers on the panel who then asked questions about my code decisions. It's a pretty intense interview. Um, I'm very curious what the, who the company was. I made the front end look good. I made the user experience easy as I used Laravel and Inertia React. Admittedly, though, my raw SQL skills weren't the best as I typically relied on ORMs in the past. However, they made it a point to test my SQL abilities, which I felt was a bit weird as I was under the impression that this was full stack role that leaned more towards front end than back end. So I spent more time focusing on the front end than the back end, however, is a last ditch effort. So they will essentially, um, it showed that your SQL skills were a bit shaky, but they still wanted them at a certain point. And so they probably saw a weakness and wanted to, you know, drill into that a bit to see what you really knew. I think that's reasonable. 
However, as a last ditch effort to try to prove my raw SQL abilities, I pulled up the database from a personal project that I work on on the side. That's can be very helpful. The project gets a couple thousand site visitors, so I showed them how I use raw SQL to generate email reports about the project's insights. Admittedly, this is very impromptu, and I felt like I didn't present it in the best light. I, but it, it's extra. I mean, you you saw the relevance in it. You, you know, got the vibe of the room, and or at least what you perceived it to be, and you felt like you know they were a little bit concerned about it. I thought this this is a good play on your part. I think. I for sure thought I wouldn't be passed along to the next stage of the interview. Surprisingly, I got an email back from the recruiter who told me that despite my SQL skills not being the sharpest, the developer panel was more impressed by the work on my personal project as they said it showed initiative and ambition, which is what they were looking for in this role. They also felt I had the ability to get better at raw SQL. Which is probably why they were challenging you a bit to see if you could work with them to solve some stuff that you didn't solve, which, you know, they're reading more into that, which it sounds like you did a good job. Um, yeah, if I was actually in the job, as many of the developers in their organization are also self-taught, so there's a preference there. Given that, she told me the fifth and final interview was about testing to see how well I understood their product and testing my ability to put on a project manager hat as a developer. Okay. They gave me a free trial for the product and I was asked with or tasked with finding one to two things I would improve on their product. The This has to be a startup. The interview was 90 minutes long and required me to present my arguments in a Google... Jesus. 90 minutes on... Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I actually like this exercise in the startup world and I... You're going to find that a lot of developers put on multiple hats in the startup world, but also their opinions matter, which is really cool about working for a startup. Like, they startups want to hire people that care about their product and have ideas to bring forward. Uh, it's it's an awesome thing in the startup world, but 90 minutes on top of all this? Holy shit. I basically pointed out that they could improve their onboarding flow by making their desktop design match their mobile design as well as improving one other small product feature in this interview i presented a total of four two a total of four people two were developers from the previous panel one product designer and one clinical therapist as i mentioned they are a therapy app i thought the interview went well but was emailed 24 hours later by the recruiter the team was able to put their heads together to debrief in a more depth in more depth after your final interview yesterday unfortunately at this time, the team has decided not to move forward. I know this isn't the news you were hoping for, and I'm sorry to have to share it with you. Yeah, it does. The way you described it, it doesn't sound like you. It's it doesn't sound like they were impressed with you learning their product and you being able to pitch in into um, like what would actually be valuable to their users. Obviously, that's not going to be your primary role, but I think a lot of developers try to just silo themselves into just being a developer, into just being a coder. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but it sounds like you don't, maybe you, you didn't, you haven't really put yourself through that thought process of flushing out a product a product and ideas or thinking more thoroughly about the features in your current company's application that could change that could be better if you had control over those features to better serve your users i think this is more of an exercise of how user centered um are you as a developer and it sounds like you didn't really do well in this interview but that's crazy that this is a 90 minute long interview after a four hours of dev time <sighs> After a 45 minute conversation, after 90 minute quiz, whatever the format of that is, it sounds like it's just a multiple choice or something like that. I don't know. You scored a hundred after a 30 minute that like, that's crazy. We're talking about it at this point. I think we're talking about like the time investment that you're going to put into a fang level company. Like this seems crazy. Does it not? Like, am I crazy? And, and thinking this is this is this normal for just larger companies in general you know what company that is what company is this i'm kind of curious
Uh, you don't have to say it if you don't want to, Anthony, but that's crazy. Five hour on site is crazy. Yeah, it, it does sound brutal. This is a lot. I don't think very few companies are going to push you this much. Um, well, they might like mentally push you pretty hard, but to require this amount of time, like this is the... Uh, <laughs> I can understand require, and I don't even know if I would accept this amount of time for like a junior developer. Like this is crazy for like a junior developer that has not proven themselves or not just a junior developer, but like if you've never had a professional developer position, um, you are going to be expected to put in more time and prove yourself more. That's a reality. And I was just reading your comment. It sounds like better help. Okay. Better help. <laughs> Gotcha. This is crazy. I don't know how large of a company they are, um, but to expect a professional developer to dedicate this amount of time into this, that is crazy. That, like, I, I don't even know what to say about that. Like, they're a, are they even being efficient with their hiring process? For them to spend this much time with you to then reject you at the end, um, I don't know. That just seems very unnatural. What is the company size of BetterHelp? Um... Let me actually look them up, just see if they're on LinkedIn. Uh, better help. Mental. Okay, let's look at people. Okay, so they have easily over like a thousand people. Okay, they're a much larger company. Hmm. They put them through, yeah. They... They make in their applications. Uh, applicants need better help after those interviews. This is crazy. This this feels like overkill. What they were probably looking for and what they should have screened better is for you to understand their users. This, in my opinion, this, this kind of interview can come later after you have been technically screened. This can come later. And now you might talk with product. Now you might talk with a designer or UX to see, like, this is actually a common placement of this. But I feel like this fit of you understanding their users and you understanding their product probably should happen a little bit sooner. But it probably happens, yeah, I don't know. Like, you, you usually start pulling people in outside of your software engineering team once they're, like, fairly sure about you it it might just be the situation where there was just one better candidate and it was a toss-up between the both of you and this just might be a really unfortunate situation but this sucks this is a huge time investment i'm upset that it took the company a total of five interviews a total of 10 hours for them man 10 hours is a lot for them to realize i wasn't a good fit especially after being led on by the other four interviews, this doesn't sting as much as it should, though, as I've had a very similar experience with Shopify, where I went through four of their interviews and was rejected in the last one as well. Yo, this is this is larger companies. You guys want to work at these companies. This is what happens. You invest a lot of time into it. Like, these need to be your dream companies. In my opinion, When if you go through a 10-hour interview process, that needs to be a top-tier company for you. You don't invest this much time as a software engineer unless you really want to work here. If you really want to work here, this time investment is worth it even if you're going to get rejected. And guess what? You can apply again a year later, right? But this needs to be a top-tier company for you. 10 hours is crazy. But a lot of people want to work at companies that do this. With Shopify, at least a recruiter had the decency to give me a phone call and give me feedback on the areas I could improve. However, with this company, the recruiter just gave me a canned email response and didn't care to give me any feedback at all. Yeah, sometimes that could be for legal reasons. It depends on what the feedback was, right? And it depends, like, sometimes the feedback that you get tends to be leaked. 
um, and tossed in like stuff like Glassdoor interviews and stuff like that. Like th there are reasons why some feedback is held. I think a lot of people make the assumption they just don't have the balls to give me the feedback because they they don't want to hear me upset. Like that's usually not the case. Um, generally, there are more factors in that play into it. Um, sometimes, like you got to realize, like uh, people that are rejected, they can act very nasty to recruiters. Like, recruiters have to deal with a lot of bullshit. If you talk to recruiters, like, you get some nasty replies with the emails back, and if you hop on a call and try to give that feedback, you can get some nasty replies there. But a lot of companies... Like, th there are so many variables that are going to play into it why you didn't get that feedback. It's unfortunate that you didn't. It's great when you do get feedback, and I think that's a plus one of companies that do give it, but... This is where I just, it'd be great to talk with people on the other side to really understand why. Um, but, you know, we don't have that transparency. I understand they don't have to give feedback to the candidates, but the fact that you took up to 10 hours of my time after reaching out to me and don't have the decency to tell me what went wrong is absurd. This industry can be brutal sometimes and it sucks. I think that's a fair statement like i think this is very reasonable i don't think this person is just complaining because you know me like i'm very critical about reddit posts and just people love to just um shit on everything on reddit and just complain and they don't want to be self-critical but i think like the wording here is reasonable i think this post is actually fairly professional um i think it's just a really unfortunate situation and this happens and i think we need to stop putting these larger companies on pedestals and again i have to emphasize this if you are going to dedicate this amount of time throughout the interview process um and you can get like you can ask total like how much time an interview process might take for the average person going through this that actually gets hired ask that amount of time see if they're going to be transparent with that. i think that's an okay question to ask but if you're going to be dedicating yourself to an interview that takes 10 hours this needs to be one of those top companies that you really want I don't know. What do you guys think about it? One positive note or one positive out of this is leveling up your interview skills. That is true. That's a really good perspective to have. Honestly, that is true. And this person did identify some things they were a little bit more unprepared or weaker with. Like we're even just seeing this impromptu thing, which, you know, like now that you talk about this project or you've already talked about this project, it's not on the spot. You've already had practice. If you have to bring this project up for writing raw SQL queries, you do have a little bit more practice with it. I think that's a really good perspective to have. Now uh, they would need to pay me to go through a 10 hour interview. Watch out for Fang. They might bite you in the butt. Okay. Um, okay. Well, anyways, this definitely sucks. It does suck. I'm sure the comments are going to be flooded with just shitting on companies in general and how the tech interview scene just sucks and it's unfair. And I, I don't think we're going to get a lot of constructive comments on this thread, but I feel like this person was really reasonable and sometimes this just happens. It's unfortunate, but when I go for interviews, there is no reason. And this is even with like take home projects. This is with... Um, technical screenings there is no reason unless you are a fang level company for me to spend over like two hours technically with you guys there's no reason for that i really better love the company if i'm going to be spending more than that like doing this 45 or 90 minute assessment and then a five hour on site this is crazy and it's okay to say no to these companies for your sanity if you have nothing better, you can grow from it, and it might be worth the time investment, but uh, this one's a tough one. This situation sucks. I don't know. Let me know what you think.